Hi, I'm Jeff, and this is Lithic Metals. Welcome to the lab. Check out these pure gold buttons I'm working on. Um, these are for a project I'm in the middle of, which uh, I'll share with you soon. Each of these buttons weighs approximately one-tenth of an ounce. And uh, so we're looking at... Uh, they're not all in here, but we're looking at uh, 10 or 11 ounces of pure gold right here. Um, I put them in this vessel to keep them safe and easily accessible while I'm working. Uh, and while doing so, I noticed a pattern evolving, which really you see over and over again in nature. You know, why? <laughs> because of physics. And uh, I thought it makes an interesting metaphor that we can apply to biology. Imagine these gold buttons are molecules. You know, we'll, we'll say the flat side um, are repulsed by water while the rounded domes are attracted to water. And our vessel uh, is a sample of a primordial sea. All right. I think many of us ponder how life began, you know, uh, it's, it seems so complex at first. It's, it seemingly calls for a need of a designer. Um, however, life as we know it <laughs> didn't just simply pop into existence as we see it today. You know, it began with the first cell that successfully split into two and continued to thrive. It wasn't, it, it wasn't alive as we would imagine life to be. It was more like a virus, you know. Bacteria are alive. They're tiny little animals. Uh, but viruses are more simplistic in a sense. Uh, they are basically RNA replicators. Mm, machines that mimic life. Uh, they need life to continue. Well, anyway, <laughs> imagine all of these molecules clumping together in our sea, okay? Um, how could they possibly organize themselves into a cell, right? That's the beauty of physics and nature. Well, actually, all of nature is physics. Uh, patterns arise spontaneously due to things like gravity and friction and chemical bonds, um, even like static electricity. As you can see, I laid out these little buttons, uh, little groups of molecules that we're considering them to be. Um, but what happens if we jiggle or stir them around? You know, you think you, you see the pattern that's developed here. Well, how could it be more organized eventually just by jiggling it around, right? But that's how physics and nature works. Let's see, maybe we won't see anything at first. It just starts to look messy and distorted and, you know, it's kind of, ah. But eventually, we'll begin to see a pattern evolve. Oh, look, and some flipped over. And like in nature, you know, that'll happen and, and jiggle them around enough and they'll repair themselves, you know, or they'll flip themselves around again. But look at the patterns that we start to see. The lines and forming. You know, look at the perfect straight lines of things. I wish those didn't flip over and make it tougher to concentrate. Look at that. You know, so they kind of go in and out of, in and out of things. They, they cluster together and they, they get kind of pulled apart again and then all of a sudden a new pattern develops. Look at that. Flip these over because it's irritating me. So I'm a force of nature in this regard. <laughs> if our molecules really were repulsed by water uh, and, a, and, a, and attracted to water, say if this was on the surface of, of a sea, they would automatically flip over, you know, just due to the laws of physics, chemical reactions. But then as we jiggle some more, we see again the patterns arise and fall apart. Well, eventually you, you jiggle long enough and amazing patterns develop. You know, 
long chains of molecules grasping together. And here is where our metaphor takes shape. You know, uh, self-organizing molecules forming the outer membrane of a cell wall. Imagine these spread over vast distances. Well, these molecules are very tiny, so we need millions of them, you know, to hundreds of thousands at least to, to make up some of these cellular walls. But you see how the patterns end up forming. And this is just a few minutes. You know, imagine if we did this for several days, what kind of crazy formations that, that we'd end up seeing in through here. Well, <laughs> so we have self-organizing molecules forming an outer membrane of a cell wall suspended in a sea you know, say these were floating on the surface, you know, things like surface tension, gravity, chemical bonds shape the cell wall eventually into spheres. It's just, that's just how they, that's, you know, you look at a planet, you look at a moon, you look at any, any sort of mass that's suspended in something, it, it tends to form into a sphere. You know, and, and that's what creates, that's what created the original cell that self-replicated. And it, and it wasn't because it said, hey, i got to turn into two. It was because eventually there were so many of these molecules collected um, that eventually it got to the point where it, it separated and formed into two spheres of these basic, very simplistic, didn't have even, even RNA within them. These are just cells that created. These were the beginning housings of future DNA and RNA um, strands. Um, of course, this is a, a very simplistic analogy, but the beauty of physics is the simplicity that lies under the complexities, right? Um, and that goes for tiny things and big things. Uh, it takes so much to figure out how light moves and how gravity works and how black holes crush. But when you end up going through all the work, you see what you have in the end are very simplistic, very basic little bits of data, uh, equations, you know, like something so simple like E equals MC squared. Um, there's a lot packed into that little bit of information, but it's so simple. Energy equals the mass times the speed of light squared. And it's so simple but yet there's so much complexity that lays around it. Um, just like any, everywhere else in nature. Well, all right. <laughs> if, if, you, if, you, uh, if you like pondering the universe's mysteries or just want to see some guy jiggle around $20,000 worth of gold buttons, um, I hope you uh, give this video a thumbs up. I hope you subscribe to the channel. You never know what our next experiment's gonna lead to. And uh, who knows what we'll get to jiggle next time. <laughs> I'm Jeff. Uh, this is Lithic Metals. Thanks for hanging out with me in the lab. I'll see you next time.